Welcome, I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. India is among the few world economies witnessing a high growth trajectory following the COVID-19 pandemic. The Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation recently announced that India's economy has surpassed expectations with a remarkable performance in the fiscal year 2023-24. The country's GDP grew by an impressive 8.2% for the entire fiscal year, which is a substantial revision upwards from the previously estimated 7.6%. India's economic growth today is driven by a robust IT and services sector, strong FDI inflows, infrastructure investments and digital advancements. Government initiatives like Make in India and Digital India along with financial sector reforms and a young dynamic workforce continue to boost economic expansion and productivity. The resilience and strength of the Indian economy are evident amidst the evolving global economic landscape. According to the National Statistical Office, GDP growth is provisionally estimated at 8.2% for financial year 2023 to 2024 up from 7% in financial year 2022 to 2023. Uh, GDP numbers are uh, very, very inspiring because we were expecting uh, this number as uh, we anticipate that growth will be robust in the coming years also. And for the current year, 8.2% is very, very encouraging. Uh, despite so many headwinds uh, like uh, deepening of the geopolitical developments and uh, global headwinds in the macroeconomic environment, India is able to grow more than 8%, uh, rather 8.2% for the last financial year. And this is indicating the uh, results of the effective reforms undertaken during the last uh, uh, many years. So if we place these numbers in a proper perspective, we find that the Indian economy has displayed considerable robustness, resilience, and accelerated growth despite uh, uh, high dates uh, for a considerable period of time, Russia-Ukraine war, the problem in Iran, uh, Iran-Israel war, earlier we had the uh, Israel-Hamas war and also the lingering effects of COVID-19 together with volatility in the price of oil. So going ahead, I think it provides a good platform to India to achieve the sustained growth over the uh, next few quarters. Comparing India's growth with the global economic landscape, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, projected a global GDP growth of around 3% for 2023. Major economies like the United States and China have been growing at rates of approximately 2.5% and 5% respectively. In this context, India's growth rate of 8.2% positions it as one of the fastest growing major economies in the world. The way Indian economy is growing and with a population of 140 crore and the demand we are doing it, and the way we have been able to manage our fiscal deficit, the way we have maintained a discipline on our uh, consumption and the way we have put in the money on the capital expenditure because the budget if you see the budget figures you will find that India's budget has improved substantially on capital account and when you put and spend money more on capital account obviously that infrastructure the money which you are putting in capital is going to give you more productivity. Poised to become a five trillion dollar economy and the world's third largest, India currently ranks fifth at $3.3 trillion. According to the Institute of South Asian Studies, India's rise to the top five bracket of the global economy has generated great expectations and interest in its future progress. This is particularly significant given the decline in growth rates in China, the main driver of the global economy for several years. The recently concluded general elections will significantly influence India's economic future. Key reforms needed include privatizing underperforming state banks, updating labor standards, monetizing non-performing assets, improving logistics, and finalizing free trade agreements. Challenges such as creating jobs for a young population and managing external shocks like conflicts and pandemics will remain at the center stage. 
Global attention will be on India's economic policies and reform execution amidst these challenges. Amid growing global climate concerns, India's shift towards sustainability is crucial. The domestic market is gradually favouring two-wheeler electric vehicles as greener alternatives. And these scooters offer a smooth, noiseless ride and a digital dashboard, making them popular in households. So join us as we explore how India is all set to become a major market for electric vehicles worldwide. As people strive for a more sustainable lifestyle and embrace new technologies, customer preferences are evolving. With growing concerns about the environment and climate change, both the government and consumers in India are turning to greener alternatives, driving the market towards electric vehicles. In India, two-wheelers dominate the automobile market making up over 70% of registered vehicles and more than 50% of petrol transactions. To protect the environment and save fuel, India is rapidly shifting to electric two-wheelers. Take the Sharma family in New Delhi. Like many Indian families, they have switched to electric vehicles due to rising petrol prices and environmental considerations. Satyendra Sharma now commutes daily on an electric scooter, enjoying its smooth and noiseless ride. The biggest thing is that pollution is not done. And the normal vehicle is very cheap, it's very cheap, it's very cheap, it's very smooth. I saw these things when I took a two-wheeler. And it's very trustworthy because, you know, if it's petrol diesel vehicle, it's a little heavier than the EV. So if you drive yourself, you will feel, when you drive a two-wheeler, it's really very, very, it's like feather. You just sit and drive, switch to drive, that's it. Uh, my son is using it while he's going to tuition or while he's just roaming around, even if it's just um, for nothing, I would say. So two-wheeler, four-wheelers, any of the, um, uh, I would say, it's economical also. You don't have to rush for fueling it every time. So I just uh, charge it at home. Uh, it takes four to five hours um, so that I can go for a drive. The rising focus on clean energy initiatives and the Make in India national campaign has reinforced investments and boosted domestic demand for EVs. And as the country becomes the largest manufacturer of electric vehicles globally, EV manufacturers in India are working round the clock to cater to the increasing demands of consumers while also maintaining their commitment to net zero. There are over a dozen electric two-wheeler manufacturers in the country. Ola holds the largest market share, followed by TVS and Hero Electric. However, many startups like Gemopi are finding good opportunities in the Indian electric vehicle market as well and have been committed to manufacturing two-wheeler electric vehicles since 2018. Through their eco-friendly creations, the company aims to cater to the diverse needs of modern commuters and create a more sustainable environment for generations to come. Amit Raj, the founder of Gemopi, recounts his journey. When he started the company, the battery technology was completely different and the vehicles were not as efficient. Furthermore, he elaborated on how technologies and vehicles have improved over time. So currently the EV two-wheeler market in India is like growing on a daily basis, but in the last two, three, four years, the battery technology is evolving. It's becoming more safer. The powertrain efficiency has increased and like the customer overall riding experience is improving, which is one reason that the customer is switching from the ICE to electric. There are a lot of variants, from low speed to high speed, there are a lot of good EVs. EVs bikes, EV scooters. In low speed, there is a 50 to 70 average, and 25 is the speed. And in high speed, there is a 65 to 70 speed. 150 to 200 is the mileage. 
The consumer's hassle-free experience with electric vehicle two-wheelers and the lower running costs, with electricity being cheaper than petrol, has led to a boom in the domestic market. Electric two-wheelers are a convenient and efficient mode of transportation for short-distance travel, especially in cities. They are mainly utilized for commuting, picking up groceries, and day-to-day -day commercial operations like delivery and taxi services. This bike is very easy to drive, very small, and it is for daily commute, so it is better for it. Because it is an EV engine, so you can charge it at night, and you can drive it at night, and it is full of range. ऑफिस का म्यूट क्लीज़ ही रहती है। दूसरी चीज़ इको फ्रेंडली रहती है। सस्टेनेबिलिटी के लिए बहुत एक स्टेप छोटा सा ये है कि हम एक ईवी अडॉप्ट कर सकते हैं। The electric vehicle market in India is shaped by evolving consumer preferences and government incentives, including subsidies, tax benefits, and widespread charging infrastructure. With increasing demand, India is projected to become the largest electric vehicle market by 2030, with an investment opportunity exceeding 200 billion USD over the next 8 to 10 years. The shift towards electric vehicles represents a movement towards a greener and more economical lifestyle for many households in India. Kanpur, often known for its Ganga Jamuni culture, is a mosaic of multiculturalism that exemplifies Hindu-Muslim unity in the region. And the three-century-old Dargav Jari Shah Baba attracts pilgrims from across the state. In a world which is often divided by differences, the shrine of Sufi saints stand as a shining example of the harmony achieved through love and respect. Nestled on the border of Kanpur and Unnao lies the revered shrine of the Sufi saint Zari Shah Baba. In a world often divided by differences, the shrine of Zari Shah Baba stands as a shining example of communal harmony as people from all religions, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians come together to the Darga to pay tribute to him. The 300-year-old ancient Mazar of Jari Shah Baba preaches the teachings of Sufism that have flourished for centuries to foster love and harmony with society. In this place, the people of Kanpur are the people of Uttar Pradesh. The people of the people of Uttar Pradesh are the people of Uttar Pradesh. They come to the chadar, they come to the pool, they come to the langar, they come to the people of the people. Believers say whoever comes to Darga never returns empty-handed and that all their wishes are fulfilled upon coming here. Along with being a place of religious and historical significance, the site also offers visitors a peaceful environment to meditate and connect with their inner selves. When we know that it was very low, it was very small, it was very small, so we knew our mother and mother, then we knew it, and then it was so big, now it was so high, but the truth is, भाई सच्ची है जो मन से मांगो तो पूरा हो जाता है इसीलिए भाई हम लोग आते हैं। Sufi architecture has traditionally been seen as a symbol of societal harmony, strengthening relationships between diverse populations, and promoting a sense of brotherhood within the community. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. South Korea and African countries vow to expand their cooperation in areas such as mining, energy and manufacturing at a business summit in Seoul on June 5. I hope that mutually beneficial resource cooperation will be expanded," South Korean President Yoon suk yeol told a gathering of about 200 political and industry leaders from African countries in South Korea. South Korea's industry ministry said in a statement that 47 agreements with 23 African countries were signed during the summit as Asia's fourth largest economy seeks to tap into the minerals and vast export market in Africa. Around 70 Chilean students took on the task of cleaning up the Mapocho River area on June 4. The students collected rubbish such as clothes and plastic packaging on the banks of the river 
accompanied by teachers and members of the Mapocho Vivo Foundation. The activity took place in the framework of Environment Day and according to Mapocho Vivo founder Joaquin Moore, the aim was to remember the importance of taking care of this natural waterway. The activity is part of the Desafio Rios Limpios Clean Rivers Challenge, a campaign organized by the foundation with the main objective of cleaning up all the country's rivers. As of 18 May 2024, volunteers had managed to clean up 2.3 metric tons of rubbish in Los Reyes Park in Santiago, where part of the Mapocho River is located. Globally, as we strive to combat environmental challenges, remarkable individuals stand out for their transformative efforts. Today, we share the inspiring tale of a villager from India's Uttarakhand state who, against all odds, turned barren land into lush forests by planting over 200,000 trees. And his dedication not only revived the land, but also sparked hope worldwide. Seventy-four-year-old Jagat Singh resides in Malakota village, situated in the Rudra Prayag area of Uttarakhand state. Affectionately known as Jungli, or wild by the locals, he is the creator of the stunning forest that graces the landscape today. After retiring from the border security force in 1980, Jagat Singh dedicated himself to environmental preservation. He meticulously planted over 200,000 trees on nearly four acres of barren land, transforming it into a thriving mixed forest, a boon to the entire village. Today, his forest hosts more than 100 species of trees, including deodar, oak, chestnut, and bamboo, enriching biodiversity in the region. In recognition of his outstanding conservation efforts, Jagat Singh has received numerous prestigious awards, including the National Indira Priya Darshini Vrikshamitra Award. ये मृदा संरक्षण मिश्रित वनों से होता है और ये जो पत्तियां गिरती है इससे नमी बनती है और यही नमी धीरे-धीरे नीचे जाती है और पानी के स्रोत विकसित होते हैं इन दीस रीजंस ऑफ उत्तराखंड चेयर पाइन ट्रीज व्हिच डू नॉट प्रोवाइड मेनी बेनिफिट्स आर मोस्टली फाउंड बट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट प्लांटेड बाय जगत सिंह an environment has been created where even those plants which previously could only be found in high altitude areas can now be grown. Moreover, this forest serves as a significant water source as rainwater is collected in the roots of the trees. The benefits of this forest are also reaching the people of the village, and Jagat Singh regularly imparts environmental knowledge to the local residents. This environmental conservation work is similar to a campaign, and Jagat Singh's son, Raghavendra, is also following in his father's footsteps and taking this mission forward. So, now, the whole world has become a mud that is the global warming and global warming. The only solution is that we have to make more misery, make a green corridor and make a micro-forest. We don't want to go anywhere. हम किसी भी रीजन में अपने आसपास ऐसे मिश्रित बन लगाकर हम अपने जल जंगल और जमीन इन दोनों को सुरक्षित रख सकते हैं तीसरा एक लेगेसी के रूप में अपना ये पिताजी का जो काम है मैंने इसको संभाला है और आगे जो नई जनरेशन है उस तक कैसे ले जाएं साइंटिफिक तौर पे उसे हम ले जाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं This forest has now also become a research center. Students from schools and colleges visit here from time to time to learn about the trees and the plants. 
Dr. Vikram Virbharti, assistant professor at Government Degree College in Rudraprayag, has been associated with the forest for many years, and his students come here to learn about environmental intricacies. The thought came in mind that, like, why not bring my students here? Because this is a working model, it's a lab where I can bring my students, make them understand what uh, Mother Nature is, because I am a firm believer of uh, learning by doing, not just by reading and just giving exam and passing on. No. The important thing is, uh, when you want to learn about environment, when you want to learn about nature, you have to be in nature. Jagat Singh's forest isn't just an environmental wonder. It also shows that with determination and effort, one person can make a huge impact. Jagat Singh's story in his forest will inspire generations to come as a model for success. India is a land of diverse cultures and rich traditions that boasts a vibrant culinary heritage that is unique to each region. Varanasi, one of the world's oldest living cities and a spiritual epicenter stands out for its culinary treasures. And this city, known for its ghats along the Holy Ganga River, offers a rich tapestry of flavours reflecting its vibrant culture. Exploring Varanasi streets reveals cherished culinary traditions that embody the city's timeless charm. As the first rays of sun paint Varanasi's ghats in golden hues, the aroma of freshly brewed tea fills the air, making the start of a new day. For the people of Varanasi, tea is more than a beverage. It's a symbol of warmth and hospitality, integral to daily life. Whether enjoyed at home or at bustling tea stalls, each sip carries a sense of tradition and connection. A must mention is Lakshmi Tea Stall, near the famous Kashi Vishwanath Temple. Established in 1958, the tea shop is well known for its toasted bread with butter and cream, perfectly paired with a cup of tea. Venture into the bustling lanes of Aranasi and you'll encounter the irresistible aroma of freshly fried kachoris or deep fried breads paired with a flavorful potato curry. The hot dish combined with sweet jalebis or funnel cakes showcases Varanasi's culinary prowess, offering a symphony of crunch and spice. Rajesh Gupta's Madur Jalpan, a 75-year-old shop, serves these treats, freshly fried in desi ghee or clarified butter. Our shop is 1953, 75 years old. We are third generation. We are operating in third generation. And this is the morning breakfast. कचौड़ी है उसके संग जलेबी है छोटी आलू कचौड़ी बनाती आलू कचौड़ी ये चलती है बना रहते हैं हमारे यहाँ शुरू से देसी की गया है और सुधरता पे हम लोग ध्यान देते हैं और हमारे दादा जी का स्थापित है हम लोग तीसरी पीढ़ी उसको स्थापित चला रहे हैं उसको Amidst the heat of the day, a glass of frothy lassi or a flavored ice yogurt drink provides a refreshing escape. Served in earthen cups or tall glasses, Lassi embodies Varanasi's hospitality with a taste of comfort and indulgence. The most famous spot is Blue Lassi in Vishwanath Street, where owner Chanchal adds a special touch with fruit infusions. The cozy blue-walled shop is adorned with pictures and notes from guests. The shop is 96 years old. ये पहले मेरे दादाजी के नाम पे था पन्नालाल लस्सी मारे, लेकिन वेस्टर्न लोग बोल नहीं पाते थे। एक साउथ कोरियन लेडी आई थी, जिन्हें पूरा इसका इंटीरियर ब्लू देखते हुए, इस शॉप का नाम ब्लू लस्सी शॉप रखा हुआ है, और जो आप पीछे फोटोग्राफ देख रहे हैं, ये मेमोरीज के लोग लगाते हैं, कि हम यहाँ विजिट किए हुए थे, 
हमारे यहाँ एक तरह की लस्सी बनती है और जिसमें मिक्स फ्रूट ड्राई फ्रूट रबड़ी बनाना कोकोनट चॉकलेट ब्लूबेरी स्ट्रॉबेरी जो ज़्यादा फेमस है As dust descends, Varanasi streets come alive with the tangy aromas of chaat, a bold, spicy snack made with fresh tomatoes, onion, spices, and lemon. Kashi Chaat Bandar, an iconic eatery, has been serving its famous chaat for decades, offering an authentic taste of the city. ये हमारी शॉप जो है हमारे पिताजी का स्थापित घर है। ये ये सन फिफ्टी वन से चालू है करीब वो पैंसठ साल हो गया दुकान चला चला चलाते हुए पैंसठ या सत्तर हो गया होगा और ये हमारी दूसरी पीढ़ी है यहाँ का जो टमाटर चाट है बहुत फेमस है यहाँ लोग टमाटर को जो खाते हैं लोग एक दूसरे से तारीफ करते हैं कि ये यहाँ बनारस जाइएगा यहाँ का टमाटर चाट जरूर खाइएगा बहुत बढ़िया बनारस को बार बार आने का दिल करता है मोदी जी ने इतना अच्छा काम करा दिया है कॉरिडोर इतना अच्छा बन गया मंदिर की जो पहले संकरी गलियाँ थी आज देखने का हर पल दिल करता है वहीं बैठे रहे और फिर काशी आगे काशी चाट पे ना आए ऐसा तो हो नहीं सकता इसलिए काशी चाट पे आगे काशी चाट खाने आए Varanasi being a hub of religious tourism and ancient heritage attracts countless visitors from India and abroad amidst the spiritual allure Its culinary treasures stand out, offering a memorable aspect of the visit. From traditional tea stalls to iconic eateries serving flavorful delights, Varanasi's food culture enriches every traveler's experience. India's culinary landscape is as diverse as its cultural tapestry, reflecting a kaleidoscope of flavors, ingredients, and cooking techniques. With that it's a wrap on today's episode of My India but we will see you next week at the same time till then goodbye and take care